feedback in the chat. No noise. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, let's take a moment, please, to pray together. And uh, then we will get started. May I request somebody to uh, lead us, lead the class in prayer. And then we will start. Who wants to pray? Shall I pray? Go ahead, go ahead, please. Father God, we come to your throne of grace this morning with thanksgiving in our heart for a new day, for a new week, Father, for all the grace and mercy that you pour out on our lives every morning, Father. Mm -hmm. We thank you once again, Father, for bringing us to this place to receive your truth, your word, Father, open our hearts. Bless pastor, bless all the students, Father, as we learn your word, Father. Let it be, uh, uh, let it enrich our hearts, Father, and help us to walk in it and be blessed in it, Father. Once again, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for all your mercies, all your blessings, Father. In your goodness, we dwell, Father. We thank you uh, for, for the teaching that we are going to receive, Father. Open our hearts, open our minds, give us the wisdom of revelation and knowledge, Father, so that we may receive it in its fullness, Father, and be blessed in it. We give you glory, we give you honor and praise for who you are and how you're leading us. In the matchless and precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you. All right, so in uh, in um, in this course here on developing the human spirit we started talking about the faculties of the human spirit um this was last week we just started delving into it and so uh my goal is just to try to go through it uh today uh try to see if we can finish uh talking about these five faculties and uh, just to uh, awaken us or inform us of um, the different ways in which God will engage with us by His Spirit, of course, uh, through the faculties of our human spirit. Um, I am not sure, was there a question at the end of last week's class? Uh, I'm not sure. Somebody is supposed to ask me a question. Anyway, if there was a question, please uh, bring it up. I... All right. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share the PDF, and then we will uh, move forward uh, with that. All right. So we were talking about the faculties of the human spirit. Uh, I just was kind of explaining uh, last week uh, how uh, you know, the body has these five physical senses, and it's through these physical senses information comes into um, the soul, where we reason, analyze, uh, and so on, and process that information, and then decide what we're going to do. Now, God has created us. You know, we are primarily spirit beings or spiritual beings, and our human spirit, also has faculties and capabilities or functions that we will call, which we'll see um, after we talk about the faculties. And what we can identify in scripture is that there are at least five faculties of the human spirit. I say at least five because uh, we see a lot more experiences that, that the human spirit has with the spiritual realm. Uh, we could uh, put all of them into these five faculties uh, 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 and I've just moved some into uh, what just what we call as functions, which we will be talking about after this. So, um, what I uh, want to encourage each of us to do is to develop these spiritual faculties. You know, now in the natural if you if you and i look at it we of course are are uh, when when a baby is born uh these natural faculties you know come into play and uh, and, and then as the child the baby grows uh, as um, you know with time these faculties are developed you know uh, and, and there is also training happening you know so initially of course the baby can see but 
uh, the baby needs some training in terms of recognition. What am I seeing? What is the meaning of what I'm seeing? Right? So we, <laughs> oh, we, we all understand how, you know, the baby is trained to recognize alphabets of a particular language, uh, objects, colors, etc. Right? So there is the faculty which, which is there. That means the example, the baby can see. But the same faculties need training. If you don't train, it doesn't mean the baby doesn't have the faculty of seeing, but recognition and meaning, uh, the baby will miss out on a lot of things, right? Uh, if, it's not a, if it's not trained to recognize and understand the meaning of what those visuals are. And so that's just a simple example. And like that, you know, you can extend it to sound and feel and all those other faculties. So very similarly, spiritually, we are all spiritual beings. So whether a person is saved or not saved, we are all spiritual beings. But a, a, a person who is saved we are born again. We, we receive the life in the nature of God. That means now our human spirit is connected or opened up to God, to who God is. And we need to train the faculties of our human spirit to see, to, rec I mean, to, to recognize, to understand the meaning and to receive what God is communicating to us through the faculties of our human spirit. And uh, uh, what we were pointing out last week was when you look at scripture, uh, God works in us through what he communicates, through what he gives to us through this faculty. So for example, here, uh, Jesus was speaking, he was quoting actually from Isaiah, and he was talking about uh, eyes, and he was talking about ears, the ears of the people, the eyes of the people, um, and their understanding of the spiritual understanding, the understanding of their hearts. Um, and through that, they would be healed. They would experience the work of God in their lives. That means God wants to communicate something through what they see, what they, what they hear, bringing understanding to their inner person. But the ultimate objective is for them to experience his work, which is salvation, healing, and so on. So God is interacting with us through the faculties of our spirit. He wants to communicate things to us in order to help us, right? In order to maybe heal us, and maybe deliver us, maybe give us wisdom, maybe answer questions we may have, uh, maybe provide guidance for me, provide direction, so many things. Uh, experience the work of God, but it's coming. God is going to communicate that through uh, the faculties of our human spirit. So that's why each of these faculties are important. So let's talk about each of them one by one. Uh, um, and, um, you know, uh, I will mention a few examples but uh, truly, you know, uh, in the scriptures, there is just numerous, there are numerous examples in each of these uh, uh, five faculty areas. And I would, I would encourage you as you're reading the Bible uh, and, 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 and you're reading about somebody's, in the scripture, you're reading about somebody's interaction with the spiritual realm. I want you to observe, pay attention to how, are the faculties of the human spirit being engaged in that particular interaction? And I shared with you last week that I was reading through the book of Zechariah, and I'm still reading through it. Uh, and I'm, you know, just so amazed at Zechariah's interaction with the spiritual realm. You know, he has the angel speaking to him. He has God showing him things. He's seeing visions. He's hearing God. 
um, uh, uh, and like that, you know, you can go through the Old Testament, you can go through the New Testament, and you see, okay, these people are interacting with, they're engaging with the spiritual realm, God is engaging with them, but you observe very carefully, how are their faculties of seeing, hearing, feeling, uh, understanding, you know, how is that being engaged? How is God engaging that? Uh, it's a big learning process in itself. And what we're going to do is just highlight some of that. So um, very often when God speaks to us, right, he speaks to us using images or pictures. Now, when we see pictures, sometimes these pictures, uh, again, we can see them. Uh, so the seeing part, uh, there are variations, right? So sometimes you see pictures. So that means this is not actual things in the spiritual realm but god is giving you pictures to see sometimes you see things in the spiritual realm which are actual beings or things that are happening in the spiritual realm right so that's an open vision both these would be would refer to as visions because god is showing you something but in one instance, which is the more often, which is, that is God is showing you pictures, images of things. And uh, those pictures may be literal or those pictures may be, uh, um, um, what is the word, representative uh, or they're representing something. They're not, you know, they're, 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 they're pointing to something. So, you know, you're seeing those images. Sometimes your eyes are open to see into the, the actual spiritual realm where you're actually seeing the angelic beings or so on and so forth. Uh, sometimes your eyes are opened to see through the spirit back into the natural realm. So that's a third kind of a vision. That means it's like you're going into the spirit back into the natural, that you're seeing something happening but in the natural world but it is through the spirit and god is showing it to you you can describe it you can say things and and uh, but it's a, it's a spiritual experience it's not the physical eye seeing you know into the natural realm uh, so you have these that's another kind of experience another kind of experience would be when your spirit is actually taken out of your physical body and you are you're experiencing the spiritual realm okay so we are talking about different ways of seeing in the spiritual realm and you find all of this in the bible and we must be open to these kind of spiritual experiences for us in the natural god could use any of these so uh, uh the most often the most common one like i said the first is where god is showing you pictures he's showing you things he's um, god is communicating to you through visions dreams pictures that the eyes of your spirit are seeing okay so it's like god putting a picture a, a photograph in front of you or a video in front of you all right but through that photograph or through that video, God is communicating things through you. So that's something that all of us will experience. And I, I, I'd say that would be the most common. Um, God says that, uh, and, and in those, in that pictures, he uses um, objects that are representative of things. Secondly, what we are saying is your eyes will be open to see actual spiritual realities in the sense of angels or things in the spiritual realm third we are saying is that you are going into the spirit but they're coming back into the natural so you're actually seeing the natural world through the spirit third experience would be your spirit is actually taken out of your body and you're engaging with the Sorry, that was the fourth. The fourth experience would be your spirit is taken out of your body and you're actually experiencing the spiritual realm. Okay. Um, the second, third, and fourth that I mentioned 
are not very common, but they can happen. Right? The first one is very common. Now, why is why is there this differentiation? I I I I don't think I have an answer for it, but other than okay, we know that this is very common, and I think it's also because uh, we are very much involved in our day-to-day -day things. We are going about our day-to-day -day activities. And in that, as we're going about our day-to-day -day activities, God can still interject our thinking with these visuals. And if we become sensitive to it, we can pick up what he's saying. Or when we are asleep in the night, we have dreams, we have visions. God shows us things. Uh, and he uses this very often. So he's just chosen to use this as a very common way of communicating to us okay so biblical examples would be dreams and visions that people have had and we, we, we see a lot of these in the bible uh, or, or pictures that people are saying you can you know example uh, god tells jeremiah jeremiah what are you seeing he says i see the branch of an almond tree and he says good um, and now here's the message you know I, I watch over my word to perform it and then Jeremiah he says, Jeremiah, what do you see? He says, I see a pot that's boiling and it's facing north. God says, good, Jeremiah. What I'm trying to tell you is judgment, judgment is coming to Israel from the north. Right? So Jeremiah, what do you see? I see a brazen pillar. All right, Jeremiah, you are that brazen pillar. I've made you a, a strong pillar to the people. I've made you a wall, a pillar. Right. So God is using these images to communicate messages to Jeremiah. I just paraphrased it. Now it's taken from Jeremiah chapter one. You will see all of these images God is using uh, to communicate a message, which Jeremiah, of course, understands. You know, today God may use a computer. He may use the word, you know, things that uh, objects that we are familiar with. But uh, he is using that to communicate some information to us. You know, he, he, he will use images from our realm. They communicate to us, and like this, you find Bible. You you find so many examples, you know, uh, of things uh, where God is using pictures, photographs, or what we refer to as videos, yeah, uh, of images, things happening that God is using it to communicate to people. You know, for example, in John one, uh, Jesus is through the Spirit; he is seen into the natural. So when um, Nathaniel comes to him, says, Nathaniel, did behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. I mean, he is a man who's got a very clean heart. He's a good person. You know, he's, there is no deceit in him. No, you know, none of that. He's, he's a good person. So Nathaniel says, you know, when did, we haven't met yet. We haven't even said hello to each other. And you're telling me, you know, the kind of person I am. Then Jesus tells him, Nathaniel, when you were standing under the fig tree and Philip came to call you, I saw you. So what has happened? Through the spirit, he's seen into the natural. That means maybe, I don't know, maybe half an hour ago or half an hour prior or an hour prior, whatever time it was, when Nathaniel was under the fig tree. And that's the time of... Uh, Philip came to call him and say, hey, come and see, come and meet the Messiah. So that was a very important moment for Nathaniel. But now when he comes to Jesus, Jesus is telling him, I saw you at that moment when that happened. So what's happening? Through the Spirit, he saw something happen in the natural, although it was in the past. God has revealed something. You know, we, we refer to it as a word of knowledge. But he's seeing something. He's, you know, something that happened in Yes. And sometimes you see it in real time. Now, I remember a couple of things. Once, I remember when we were having a meeting, I, I uh, again, I saw this. And I said, somebody has, you know, and, and it, this is so, this is, you know, just see the timing of it. The worship had got over. I had just come forward, like after the worship. I had taken the mic in my hand. At that moment, I saw something. Now, at that moment, the door opened to the hall in which we were, and one man was walking in. Right? That means, just think about the whole timing of all this. It's not something we timed it. But this person is walking in. I have just gone up in front, taken the mic, 
and this person has walked into the hall and I'm saying, and I saw this. And so I just begin to describe. I said, somebody has come here. You were in a meeting just before you came. You were in a meeting just before you came to this, this service. And in the meeting, there were people who were trying to convince you to give them 50,000 rupees or whatever that amount was, I think 50,000. And uh, uh, they were trying to force you to give it. Uh, I, I'm just speaking to you by God. I said, don't do that. They are trying to, you know, uh, cheat you or whatever that was. So I'm speaking those words because in the spirit, through the spirit, I've seen something in the natural. And just as I'm speaking it, this person is actually walking in. And he's actually walking in, right? He had come after that business meeting, whatever he had, some, wherever he had it, right? After that meeting, he's coming to this prayer service. He's walking through the door and I'm saying these words. I mean, you couldn't like timing, look at the whole timing of everything. And he was shocked because I'm just saying exactly what happened in the meeting before he was walking to the service. And he came to me after the service. He came and said, this is what happened. You know, you said exactly what happened. This is the meeting I was in. This is what they were asking me to do. And as soon as I walked in, I heard you say this. And I now know what to do, I, rather what not to do. I should not give in to whatever those people were demanding. And that saved him uh, from that situation. And of course, you know, whatever the repercussions of that situation would have been. So in the spirit, you've seen something in the natural. And, and, and you know, God is saying that you another time i remember and it was quite a little embarrassing i was in another meeting i'd just gone forward and some people had walked in they sat down at the back and i said there are some people who you've walked you've come in here you are actually at a police station before you came to this service and uh i i, I you know i don't just remember all the details but i said you know you were in the police station and this is what happened and you've come here and these were actually three young people they had actually gone they were in the police station some problem had happened. I don't know what it was. Right after the police station, they had come to this prayer meeting. And here I am standing in front and I'm just saying, this is what happened to you. Now, it's a little embarrassing when you, you're, this is a prayer meeting, you're talking about people coming, going to a police station and then coming to the service. But what's happening? You are seeing something and you're just saying it. And it is bringing hope or healing or deliverance or guidance or direction, whatever it is, to that individual or to that group of people. Right? So like this, there are just so many numerous, numerous examples where God is showing you through pictures. He is giving you visuals. It could be a photograph or a video. It could be something about the past. It could be something about the present. It could be something even about direction that people need to take. But the point is this, that we need to be able to learn or be open. You know, we need to be open to these kinds of interactions from God with our spirit so that, you know, we, you know, God can use us. He can use it for our benefit. That means when you need guidance for your own life, uh, when you need to know what to say or do, uh, you know, it could help you or it could help some other people, you know. Um, uh, it, it could, God could use it to minister to others, it could use it to minister to yourself, you know, that, that that's so many different things. Now, I've not had, uh, personally, I've not had, uh, at least to my own understanding, uh, you know, the, 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 the fourth um, kind, where uh, you are, your spirit is taken up into heaven, and you are, you know, the experiences like John and Paul the Apostle, John the Apostle. I personally have not had those kinds of experiences, so I can only speak of it from the Bible. And I'm just you know, hoping that you know it'll be great if it does happen. But that's something we can't force ourselves; we make ourselves available. But thank God, at least you know the first one, which is the most common one. If we are able to understand that. And that's just more than enough for the way in which God communicates to us. And we can then, you know, use it for ourselves or to um, serve others. So let me just share a few pointers here uh, on, on interpreting and communicating, okay, uh, on what you're seeing, the visual, so that we will try to cover some more ground. So 
uh, uh, simple guidelines here. One, if it's a literal thing, you just describe what you're seeing, right? So if God is showing you certain events, a sequence of, sequence of events, dates, names, numbers, whatever, just say say what you see, right? If it's 50,000, you say 50,000. If it's yeah, if it's a name, you say the name. If it's a number, you say the number. You know, just say what it is. If it's if it's literal, right? If it is figurative, that means the literal doesn't make sense, then you have to interpret. So, for example, uh, uh, if you see a tree being, you know, blossoming and bearing fruit, uh, then of course you have to interpret. Then you say, "You God is showing me that you are going to be very fruitful in your life." You know, now what you're seeing may be a tree bearing fruit, but what you're interpreting and speaking to the person is you are going to be very fruitful in your life. Why? Because that tree bearing fruit is symbolic. It's a figurative, right? Um, and uh, you're interpreting it. Basically, you're saying God is telling you you're going to be very fruitful. Or uh, it likes that. You know, there could be so many images that are very symbolic in nature and uh, you interpret that, yeah. Uh, and you give the meaning of what you're saying so that the person to whom you're speaking to uh, uh, understands the message, right? So some sometimes it's just literal things are seeing happening. You say it literally. Sometimes it's figurative, so you interpret it, give the meaning. Now, when you're interpreting it, uh, be careful to always use biblical imagery, right? Don't don't use imagery from other sources. What what do those images mean in the Bible? That's what you interpret it as. Okay, don't uh, go off into uh, interpreting uh, it by using uh, horoscope books or you know you get all these other kinds of books around these days so don't use those kinds of things use the word of god right stay with biblical imagery and uh, also uh, many times god will give you he will use bible characters or incidents or texts um uh, as as figure figure in a figurative sense for you to communicate uh, a message to the people. So, for instance, you know you might somebody you might be ministering to somebody, and God is showing you David killing Goliath. Uh, so, what's what's God doing? He is using an incident in the Bible uh, to communicate a, a message. So, he's using that figuratively for you to communicate a message to this person. You can say, you know, you, you know, God is showing me that. Just like David killed Goliath, you are going to be able to kill your Goliaths, etc. Right? Or you might highlight texts from the scripture. You know, uh, and uh, uh, you know, you know, on Saturday, this past Saturday, we were in a, we were visiting a, 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 a person, uh, Amy and I, my wife and I. We were just spending time with somebody that they, uh, this elderly person uh, she just lost her husband so, some months ago and so we just went to just spend time and we're just listening to her. we spent most of the time just listening to her as she was just sharing you know different things that were going on in her life so most of the time we just spent listening and then towards the end we we're going to we spend some time in worship and prayer now during that time of prayer suddenly uh, in my spirit i was taken to psalm 118 now it says the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the house of the righteous now uh, you know it's a little diff touchy to announce that kind of a verse in a home uh, that has just they've just they're going through grief right they've just lost uh, the person the, the the husband the father and the family and uh, it's a little you know, how could, you know, you're, you're, but I just went to her. I said, you know, I know God is showing this to me, so I'm just going to speak it. I said, you know, uh, I just began, you know, through my prayer, I was declaring other things. And then I came in my spirit, it came to Psalm 18. So God is highlighting a text, you know, in your spirit. So I began to say, the voice of rejoicing and salvation in the house of the righteous. The right, the next verse. Huh? The right, uh, the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. And I then began to continue saying other things that I was seeing. But um, so after we finished all the prayer, then she said, "You know, God has been speaking to me about His right hand. And when you mentioned the right hand of the Lord does valiantly, that just, you know, I just got a hold. She said, she said, I just took a hold of it. You know, so." While we were there just praying, 
it seemed a little bit out of place to quote Psalm 118 and you know the voice of rejoicing and salvation and all that you know in, in, in a situation like this but you just go with the flow your mind doesn't understand it sometimes it seems like okay uh, this could be wrong but you go with the flow and then you realize God has already been speaking to that person about his right hand and so the moment I said it it just connected with her spirit and it brought a lot of encouragement to her uh, and other things that we uh, sharing you know so I'm just giving a very simple example it just happens normally that God can use Bible characters he can use in incidents from the scriptures he can use scripture texts uh, you know showing it to you in visual through what you're seeing in your eyes of your spirit and you can use it to minister to other people okay uh, before I get into the next faculty of hearing of how you hear from God uh, any questions on this one Okay, so any questions? Um, Abraham, Pastor, did you see them in the police station or how did you receive it, please? So, um, Abraham, so, uh, uh, so God, you know, God uses all our faculties, right? So, there is what you see. At the same time, there is what you hear. Okay, that means words coming up into your spirit. Uh, and there is what you feel, right? So in that particular example, uh, it was, okay, it was, uh, I, I, I saw something, a visual, but the understanding, that means the hearing, it was police station, right? And, and, and I forget all the, whatever the details were, like, you know, what caused them to go, what was the situation? But the situation comes through the understanding. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like you would say, both your faculty of seeing and hearing are involved. Just like how in the natural, you know, you see and you hear, and sometimes you also feel, you know. Uh, so for example, right now, you are two faculties that are involved. You are hopefully seeing me, and hopefully you're also hearing me. Right, so both your faculties are involved uh, in this communication process. So, uh, in that situation or in the previous uh, situation, about yeah, you know, there's a visual, but there's also a hearing, right? So, you, together you understand what the message or the information is. Okay, um, I hope that helps. Say your question, please. Your hand is raised up. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, thank you for the lecture. Um, it's more like a comment to maybe expatiate or validate or correct. Um, we've looked at the faculty of seeing. Uh, I, I kind of see it as all the things you've told us. For, uh, for a normal believer, yes, these things could happen seasonally, but I think this is more prominent with those who've been given the gift, who are gifted with uh, the discerning of spirits. They're able to see into the supernatural, have all these vision, trance experiences and all that. So correct me if I'm wrong to say that um, if one has doesn't have this gift, this may not be a regular occurrence compared to somebody who has a gift of discerning of spirits or who might be called to the prophetic. Hmm. Um, here's what I would um, say. Um, see, all of us, all of us, every believer um, has all these five faculties. You know, so we all, spiritually, we, God has given us eyes to see, ears to hear, uh, the ability to understand perceive and so on. He's given all of us these faculties. Obviously, uh, he intends to communicate to us through these faculties, right? So uh, at the very basic level, every believer should be able to hear, see, um, feel, and exercise all of their faculties and to develop their faculties. So very basic level, because God said, the spirit bears witness with our spirit. God said, um, God said, uh, uh, you know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So God speaks to all of us, right? So at a very basic level, all of us should uh, be experiencing God's interaction with our five faculties. Second, 
for a believer, if these faculties are trained, they will be able to pick up more from God. For a normal believer, you know, because they, they, sometimes, they don't even know sometimes, some of them don't even know <laughs> they actually have these faculties. So they're not even paying attention, you know, uh, to what God is speaking to them. So they miss out on so much. So a believer who recognizes that, you know, God has given us these faculties and then they're practicing, training them, they're obviously going to see here and they're going to hear, uh, experience a lot more. The third stage, which I would say, is the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, again, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for all believers, right? Every believer, every child of God now, uh, is instructed to desire spiritual gifts, uh, to covet the gifts, to all, all the gifts. So there are nine gifts listed. Covet all of them, one of which is, you know, the gift of the word of knowledge, another one, the word of wisdom, another one, the... Uh, and the setting of spirits and so on. So, so all believers are encouraged to covet the best gifts. So believers who are trained in the gifts of the spirit and who covet the gifts are obviously going to be in this third place, you know, where they're going to experience more. And then the fourth one is that special category where, uh, like you said, there are people who are called to be prophets uh, they're called into these special uh, ministry functions, and they too, uh, because of their ministry function, they will uh, experience this maybe at a more frequent level, uh, or a frequent, more, more frequent, or maybe at a more heightened level. That means you know, they will have all these other extra experiences. But there is nothing that prevents a day-to-day -day believer from moving in these first three realms. That means through their spiritual development, you know, they, they go from, first of all, recognizing and understanding the five faculties, then secondly, training and learning to listen. And thirdly is learning to desire, move in the gifts of the spirit and growing in this. So what I would say is a believer who's very well developed will will be quite similar to a, a person who's in full-time, and uh, no, sorry, not full-time, who's called into the office, one of these things, very similar, except that one has a little, a person who's called into this example, the office of a prophet, uh, they will have, again, in the office of a prophet, you could have so many variations, you know, God, God doesn't make everybody carbon copies, so they are, you know, we just have a variety of prophetic expressions. Uh, and so some may have more out-of-body experiences or whatever, those kinds of things, angelic visitations, or some just hear the word of the Lord. Uh, but it's very close. A believer who's developed can be very close to somebody who's called into the office. So that's how I would uh, respond to what you said, Say, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. All right, Abraham. Uh, be... Abraham says, Ephesians 4, 23, 24, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, put on the new man. Uh, Ephesians 4, 23, 24, so Abraham's question is, how will someone interpret this? If you, um, can we say some people are putting on Christ? If you are. Um, Abraham, I didn't quite understand your question. Would you like to explain it? Um, Abraham? Okay. Um, all right, so Abraham, I'm just going to, uh, you know, maybe you, you, you could ask the question uh, because I didn't understand it. I'm not sure how to... Um, hey, Jamie. Hello, sir. It's uh, it's um, ah, okay. Now it's better. Please go ahead. Please. Okay, yeah. So I'm um, I'm saying that if you are ministering and you receive this verse, like by knowing, how do you interpret this verse to those who are listening? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, 
So, I mean, here's how I would do it. I mean, if a bus, I mean, example, if I'm speaking to an individual or maybe a group and suddenly this scripture comes in, then I would say, you know, the Lord wants to remind you that you are a new person and uh, your inner person is created in righteousness and true holiness. And so God wants you to, you know, recognize who you are in the spirit. God wants you to recognize, you know, that you are truly a person who's created in the image of God. And therefore, um, you can fully, you know, display or put on Christ and you can, you know, God can be revealed through you. You know, and, and the other thing, Abraham, is while you are, you know, a scripture is given to you and you are starting to interpret it and speak it, God will also place emphasis. You know, God will guide you and saying, okay, this is what I want you to emphasize to this person. Sometimes it could, and many times I've experienced it, the same scripture, but the emphasis is different. You know, what God is speaking to the particular individual is something different. So it could be that God wants to emphasize, hey, but you need to renew your mind. Your mind is, you know, uh, has been contaminated. And you need to really renew our mind. And when you do that, people will be able to see Christ. Maybe that's the emphasis for one person. Maybe sometime the emphasis could be something else, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, on, on holiness or on, on, on their identity, you know, or, you know, le just let go of all your, uh, what people have called you and how you've been labeled in the past and, and begin to live out of you. So the emphasis, you know, in different things, the same scripture, but the emphasis that God is giving you to speak to different people uh, can be different. And so you just, you know, you have to be listening uh, through the whole process and God will guide you as to what is the specific message uh, to give to that individual or that group. Okay, Pastor, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, welcome. All right, so let's try to cover the second one. I, um, and let's, uh, so the, the next faculty that we must develop uh, is the ability to hear, right? So we know how important hearing is in the natural, right? In the natural, a uh, lot of things that we come to understand. So seeing and hearing, you know, are the two big faculties you know, in the natural as well, in the spiritual also seeing and hearing are very important. So hearing, you know, you find this many times in scripture, and you know, uh, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He's not talking about natural hearing. He's talking about spiritual hearing. You know, he who has ear, ear let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. So once again, this is um, about spiritual hearing, not natural hearing. So many scriptures like this. And uh, 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 he says, you know, your ears shall hear a word behind you. Your ears shall hear a word behind you. Uh, so there's, there's, you know, God is talking about spiritual hearing, of course. And um, uh, in Isaiah 50, he's talking about, you know, being vacant morning by, mo mom, morning by morning and your ear being opened to hear, right? Uh, so, so many examples. He has opened my God has opened my ear. That means God is speaking to me in my ear. Now, what, what can we say about hearing? You see, many times in the Bible, many times in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, when you, hear, when you read the phrase, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, we have to stop and think, how did the word of the Lord come to Elijah? You know, it's a very simple statement. It's, 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 you find it so often. It's a very simple statement. The word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying. Okay, how did the word of the Lord come to this person? Now, in some cases, it tells us, you know, example, oh, he saw a vision, or an angel came and appeared to him. Or sometimes we have, okay, there, there was a... Uh, sound from heaven there was a loud thunderous or you know sound like the sound of many waters etc so in those cases we can say oh yeah you know an angel came and spoke he had a vision he had a dream uh, or uh, there was an audible voice but there are many i would say most of the time especially in the old testament it doesn't tell us how it just says the word of the Lord came to so-and-so. 
No, it doesn't say angel came. It doesn't say a vision came. It doesn't say uh, there was a, uh, uh, an audible voice. It just says the word of the Lord came to so and so. So question, how did it happen? Now, we can't prove it, neither can we disprove it. But I'm just sharing with you my conviction. My conviction of how the word of the Lord came is simply there was knowledge imparted to the inner person. Because in the spiritual realm, okay, let, let's talk about the natural realm. In the natural realm, we use sound as a vehicle to communicate knowledge through the hearing process, right? So what do you hear? You hear sound. Right now, all of you are listening to me. You are actually hearing sound. But the sounds, and what am I doing? I'm making sounds. I'm just sitting here making sound. I'm making noise. <laughs> I'm not making noise. I'm just making sound. The difference is the sound I am making is intelligible. And because the sound I am making is intelligible, it's communicating information to you. If I sat here and I spoke in tongues or I spoke in some Indian language or something like that, and you didn't understand it, it will just be noise to you. Because the sound I'm making is not intelligible. I could be saying something very intelligent in some other language. So the sounds I'm making could actually be communicating information, but it's of no use to you because it's in, you, you don't understand the. You don't recognize the sound. You can hear the sound, but you don't recognize what it is. The point is, knowledge or information is transmitted through sound in the natural. But in the spiritual, you don't need it. You don't need sound to transfer knowledge. So when we say we hear in the spirit, that spiritual hearing does not require sound. It is just knowledge is transferred. So that's the first thing you must understand about hearing in the spirit. Sometimes we refer to this as um, inner knowing, inner witness, and so on. But really, it's knowledge being transferred to you in the spirit. You are actually hearing God but there is no sound. Example, yesterday I was in church service. Um, you know, I was, just, I was just saying, God, you know, whatever you want to say or do or anything, you know, and I was, uh, and, and I don't know exactly when it happened, but it was sometime uh, after the service started or something. It was like something very, it just came into my spirit, just settled into my spirit saying, you need to speak to the working people, the people in the marketplace. You need to tell them that um, there is a mandate, there's an anointing on their lives. You need, you know, I just felt God wanted to speak to these people. And, and, and it, just, just, it just came and settled quietly in my spirit. It wasn't something I had premeditated. It wasn't something I planned to do. Uh, it wasn't something I was I was even thinking about. You know, I, I I just came. You know, like during worship time, I was just worshiping. It was it was not even on my mind. But suddenly, it just came and sat in my spirit. I said, "Okay, I know I have to talk. I have to say this." Then I said, "Okay, I will keep it till the end." You know, you also need to know the timing. Sometimes you release it uh, right after worship, sometimes you may really, you know, at different times, I just felt, okay, I'm going to keep this to the end. After I finish teaching the word, I will release it. But it just came and said, and, and I, I just got a sense of these are the things I need to tell. And these are the people I need to address. And this is what I need to say, because God wants to do something, you know, now, so that is hearing. Now, did I hear an audible voice? No. Um, did I hear the sound of a trumpet or a waterfall or something? No, no, no. It just came and sat in my spirit. 
So that's hearing in the spirit. It's without a voice. And then just like in the natural, you know, you wait for the right time to say something. In the spirit, you, you keep it in your heart until the time you release it. Right? So I finished, I did the, you know, I did the Bible teaching that we had to do. We finished it. And then by the time time was up already, but I knew I had to release that today. I mean, yesterday after the service. So I, I, I took extra time and uh, I just, you know, because I had to release it. I had to, it had to come out because that was something I knew God wanted to speak that day in that service to the people who were listening. Right? So just released it. And uh, yeah, there were some people who came after, after service who shared, you know, that this is something they that just really minister to them. So hearing in the spirit happens uh, in this uh, many times in this non-audible impartation of the message that comes into your spirit, but you must perceive, you must recognize. What if I, you know, I thought, oh, it's not God. Or if I wasn't paying attention, uh, I would have missed the whole thing. I would not have said anything on that lines, right? So the key is you need to know we need to be perceptive in the spirit to pick up what God is saying, what you are hearing, what knowledge is being imparted to your spirit, in your spirit. Okay, And again, you'll find many, many, many examples in scripture. Uh, by the time for this lecture is over, we have to stop. We, we will continue this. Um, okay. Now, Abraham, okay, Abraham's question is, uh, is it sometimes very faint? Yeah, so you get a wide range, right, wide range. Sometimes it's just a simple thing. It just comes into your spirit and you could miss it. You know, the, the, word, the, the, word, of the, the word of the Lord just comes very really simply. It could be a single word. It could be a sentence sometimes, you know, and you could miss it. Or sometimes it's really heavy in your heart, like the, the prophets would say, the burden of the, the the burden of the word of the Lord. That means the word of the Lord came with a burden. It came like with some heavy, you know, you, you couldn't miss it. But sometimes it can be very faint, very gentle, right? And it, it could be a word, it could be a sentence, and if you, uh, or sometimes it just could be the starting of a of a of a of a verse or something. So we have to be very sensitive. You know, God would do, God speaks in numerous ways. Uh, but that is hearing in the spirit. It's, a, it's God speaking. He's putting information in your spirit. He doesn't need sound to do it. Okay. All right. So um, I want to encourage us. We, we will pick this up again. We'll talk, talk more about it. Um, and um, I, I want you to, I want to encourage all of us. And faculty of seeing, faculty of hearing. Okay. Develop those things. Okay. We will close now. I've already taken four minutes into your break time. Um, we will dismiss. And I will meet you in, uh, in, in about seven minutes in the other class on holiness. Okay. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor.